welcome everyone to this presentation about the challenges in reducing scope three emissions and possible solutions. My name is Katarina Paulsen, and I am responsible for sustainability at a company called Alfa Laval. Alfa Laval is a Swedish company with global presence. Last year, we had an order intake of 3,800 million euro. We have about 17,000 employees and we have 40 production sites and sales companies in around 100 countries around the world. But what do we produce? We are world leading in three key technologies, heat transfer, fluid handling and separation. But I guess 50% of you guys listening to me now are thinking, so what are these technologies used for? Actually, an Alfa Laval product is never far away from you. If you're sitting in a building right now where there's heating or cooling, chances are quite large that there's an Alfa Laval heat exchanger in that building. But if you were taking a cruise ship, chances are that very many of our products would be in the engine room of that cruise ship, either making sure that oil and water are not dispelled to the ocean or reducing emissions. I could go on for this whole session talking about all the applications our products have, but let me just give you a few more examples. The production of the Corona vaccine uses our separators. We are used in the production of biofuels, in the production of beer, and in wastewater treatment. Sustainability is an incredibly important part of our company, not only because we want to make a positive difference and because we care, but also because when our products are being used by our customers, we are making sure that 11 out of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals are being reached. But actually, you are amongst the first outside our company that are seeing our new sustainability strategy towards 2030. This strategy is based on four C's. Caring, which is all about health and safety, inclusion and diversity, and human rights. Committed, which is all about our work with ethics and anti-bribery, anti-corruption. Circularity, which are, most of you are already familiar with, but which is all about maintaining the value of raw materials and water quality. But today I will concentrate on the fourth C, namely climate. Our ambition regarding climate is to become carbon neutral by 2030 across our full value chain. We will achieve this by prioritizing decarbonization, innovation, and partnerships. I will come back to the great importance we put on partnerships. Becoming carbon neutral across the value chain is a big step and challenge for us at Alfa Laval. This means we're taking care of scope one and two emissions but we're also stepping deeper into the scope three emissions. Setting concrete targets in short and medium term is essential to ensure that we reach all our sustainability ambitions towards 2030. In the area of climate, we have set a target of reducing 50% of our scope one and two emissions by 2023 compared to baseline 2020. Already there is a big challenge, but it is also a challenge because we are actually not starting from scratch. Already in 2015, we set a target to ourselves to reduce carbon emissions by 15% by 2020 compared to 2015. Actually, we managed to reduce our emissions by 50% in that time period. Very much of the reason behind this is that we have switched to electricity sourced from renewables. So in 2020, 78% of our electricity was sourced from renewables compared to 27% in 2015. 
Another target for 2023 is that we are going to set a clear roadmap for scope 3 emission reduction. This is the real challenge. So what do we encompass in scope 3 emissions? Well, downstream emissions from our business travel, the emissions from the transportation of us to our customers, the emissions from using our products in our customers' processes. And actually, Alfa Laval is in the unique position that when our products are being used, in very many cases, they help to reduce carbon emissions. So they are actually contributing to our customers' scope one and two emission reductions. In stream emissions, we will also include end-of-life emissions. But what I think you are mostly interested to listen to today is our work on scope three emissions from our suppliers. And why are these emissions so important to us? Well, the first reason is that when we have made calculations, we have found that more than 40% of the emissions are from our suppliers. Having read several reports on the subject, we now understand this is actually the case for very many other companies as well, that their scope three emissions are much larger than their scope one and two emissions. This means that setting baselines and not the least targets in this part of the value chain is vital. At Alfa Laval, part of the challenge is that we have more than 5,000 suppliers spread in more than 50 countries around the world, and they provide us with eight different commodities. We have more than 300 co-workers working with our supply chain. And just to get an idea and a feel for the type of supplies we get, we source 100,000 metric tons of metal every year. But regarding the challenges from a carbon neutral ambition perspective, we have three main challenges. One of the challenges is the complexity of our supply chain. The other one is to find the climate relevant suppliers. And the third is our influencing power on high emitters. Let me dig a bit deeper into each one of these challenges. So, challenge number one, the complexity of our supply base. That is because the size of the suppliers we source from varies significantly, from very big multinational companies that themselves set science-based targets to very small companies of between 20 to 200 employees. Also, the type of supplies we source vary greatly. So we source tons of raw materials, but we can also source one tiny, very designed product that comes into our value chain. The geographic spread of our suppliers also has an impact because legislation and other demands on these suppliers varies greatly. And lastly, as I said before, we are a global company, which means that we buy locally and sell globally. This in turn means that we have a very complex chain, which in turn, of course, causes carbon emissions. The second challenge I mentioned is about finding the climate relevance to our baseline. We need to prioritize the suppliers in some way. So we have decided to cut the cake on one dimension based on spend. But here is a challenge as there is an exponential number of suppliers we need to include in the baseline. Let me give you an example. If we go from 30% of our spend to 40% of our spend, the suppliers included in the baseline will grow from 100 suppliers to 1,100 suppliers. That's a tenfold increase. Even so, we have decided to set our baseline at 80%. You can just imagine how many suppliers that means. The third challenge is that although we are market leaders in separation, fluid handling, and heat transfer, our products are made mainly out of steel. 
and we lack influencing power amongst others with our steel suppliers. And as you all know, steel is one of seven uh, supplies that have the highest emissions in the world. These three challenges force us to have a very focused and streamlined approach to our supply chain. In turn, this will leave us with three main gaps from the approach. One of the gaps is that decarbonization in very many areas requires new technologies and solutions. The second gap is that we will have our long tail of small to medium suppliers that might not have the tool to set carbon targets. And the third gap is that large suppliers, some of them we have low influencing power on. So we can together enable an acceleration towards fossil free steel production, thereby reducing our emissions in the value chain. To conclude, on a very positive note, most of you know that energy efficiency will be paramount to reaching the Paris Agreement 1.5 degree target. Technology is actually available already today. We as Alfa Laval make a huge impact. By way of example, the heat exchangers that come out of our factories on a yearly basis reduce carbon emissions by 25 million tons this corresponds to the yearly emissions from Greater City of London every year. And by that, I would like to thank you for listening to me today. And amongst everything, I would love to invite you to join us at our Alfa Laval booth. And there we can maybe form partnerships, because without partnerships, we will probably not reach the Paris Agreement. But with partnerships, I think we will do it and we will do it together. Thank you very much and have a great day.